Welcome to Wadsworth History on Film, a program presented by the Wadsworth Area Historical Society and designed to record the oral history of Wadsworth for posterity. I'm your host, Cesar Carino, and our guest today is Dr. Gary Bernard. Dr. Bernard, you hardly fit the model for what we have been doing for the past several weeks, and that is talking to people who are 65 and older, because you're not 65 yet. As a matter of fact, you're not even 60 yet, as I remember. But we do have a person here who knows not only a lot about Wadsworth, and he himself has done a tremendous amount to make Wadsworth what it is, but there are at least three generations of optometrists that you can represent, uh, you, your father, and your grandfather, all the way back. And what we need to do today is to find out about those. And then on your wife's side, the Griesmers are an old, old family, and uh, your mother is from an old family here in Wadsworth, so uh, we need to get started on who you were, or who you are, rather, and uh, when you got started in life. Um, are you sensitive about your age? Not one. Not, at all. not one. How bit. about telling us then when you were born? I was born uh, February 5th, 1938, so I've been alive in seven generations. Seven generations, that's mm -hmm. right. Seven decades. Seven decades, mm -hmm. that's right. Seven decades you've been alive. Where were you born here in Wadsworth? I was born in Wadsworth, mm -hmm. yes, at the uh, old hospital um, delivered by the venerable Dr. Pease. Dr. Pease, Dr. Mm -hmm. Pease, who lived on Broad Street uh, mm -hmm. in his latter years, later years, I should say. And um, who, who were dad and who were mom? Um, my dad is Amos Bernard, um, and my mother is Carolyn Leaf. And Carolyn Leaf is from Seville Road. Yes, uh, they moved here when my mother was uh, about seven years old from the Columbiana, Youngstown area. Right. They lived on uh, Fairlawn, and then they moved to Seville Road. That's, I think that's correct, because Dick Leaf, your uncle Dick Leaf, mm -hmm. uh, joined us at uh, Wadsworth Centralized School uh, at an early age, but he had been at the, uh, one of the city schools at the mm -hmm. time. Uh, um, <clears throat> Dr. Bernard, tell us, if you will, please, a little bit about um, your father's family and that, uh, that genesis, all the way back to the beginning that you can remember from Dr. Amos Bernard, your grandfather. Yeah, my, my grandfather was C.R. Bernard, Dick Bernard. Um, he was born in 1884 in Cleveland. Um, my grandmother, uh, Cecil Parrish, was also born in the Cleveland area the year after 1885. Um, they came to Wadsworth in the early part of this century. Um, I'm not sure exactly what year, but it was probably around 1909 or 1910. Um, my grandfather, Bernard, was a jeweler and watchmaker. Um, he had his store in downtown Wadsworth. Um, Where was it? If you remember uh, Nielsen Jewelry. Yes, I do. Well, the before... Corner, so, so that we, uh, we can identify this for history's sake. That was on the corner of Maine and Broad. Exactly. Right at the, right yes, uh, Dr. Guthrie, the dentist's office, is, uh, occupies that building right now. And it was Bernard and Hamilton Jewelers. If you go into uh, Bixler Electric, where they have right now, right behind the cash register, you'll see a panorama of downtown Wadsworth, and Bernard and Hamilton is in that right, uh, corner. That was building your grandfather. Right that was my grandfather. Richard Bernard. That's correct. Richard Bernard. I said Amos, but Amos is your father. Amos is my dad, yeah, that's, that's right, correct. That's right, that's right. And your first name is Amos, actually, is that's it? That's right, A. Gary, and that's the right. Amos. And, and, and But do we call you doctor? Well, well. you call me Gary, whatever. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm comfortable with, uh, with well, that. Well, I know you are, and we, um, we have a personal relationship, but um, you earned that, and we want to give, make sure that you, you get that, uh, that title. Now then, Dr. Bernard, tell us a couple of things more about the, um, the Bernard family, uh, who... Uh, your uncles are on the, your dad's side, who your uncles are, and aunts on, your, on both sides, because there are a lot of interrelationships here in Wadsworth. Yes, there certainly are. Um, my father was um, one of four children. He was the third born. Um, he had a brother by the name of Jay who died in infancy. He was about, he was a little less than two years old. Um, and then my Aunt Juliet was born who, uh, she is three years older than my father. My father was born in 1915, um, and Aunt Juliet is still alive in uh, not very good health, but um, in, in Kent at a, in a nursing home. And my cousin uh, Gay, her daughter, sees after her. Um, and also, um, my father's youngest brother was Dick Bernard. Dick Bernard. Um, Dick was uh, 
killed in World War II in New Guinea, which is a, quite an interesting story. I mean, uh, we, in we'd itself. like to hear about that too. Um, he we was. All, we knew Dick quite well. Yes, Dick was in optometry school mm -hmm. in Chicago uh, when he was drafted, went into the military, and uh, became a, uh, a bombardier navigator and uh, served in the South Pacific. The airplane um, that he was killed on was uh, hit a mountain in New Guinea. Uh, they were going on R and R to Australia. The airplane was lost, um, hit hit the side of a the mountain. They really never did know what what happened right. to it until 1984. This was in World War II. That's correct. Probably in nine, as a matter of fact, he died in 1943. 43. 43. That's 43. correct. I remember that. I remember coming to see it in the paper. And uh, we all knew him. I mean, uh, of course, everyone knew everyone else in Wadsworth. Uh, and R&R um, &R is uh, rest and recuperation. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes we have these acronyms or these initials, which may not mean anything to someone 50 years from now. So we yes, he, uh, we'll he had um, flown uh, 50 missions and uh, was going to be an instructor mm -hmm. uh, when the plane was lost, and there were 20. 22 men on that airplane. It was found in the jungles of New Guinea in 1984. That's right. I remember that too. There was a book written about it called A Plane Lost, and um, a very famous pathologist gathered the bones from that wreck and identified all 22 men from their bones. Now then, Dick's um, body was brought back to Wadsworth. He was in, no, he was um, interred in um, Missouri. His wife, um, that's right. Made that decision That's right. because he uh, could have been buried here in Wadsworth or in Arlington. Right. Um, she chose to have him buried uh, in, near her family yes. in Missouri. I had forgotten that, the, but I, I remember that there was a story about that too. Uh, this was um, what uh, 12, uh, 13 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. 84. It was the spring of 84. Right. And that had to bring back some very, very sad memories. Yes. Um, I really can't say that I remember my uncle. I, m my grandmother never gave up mm -hmm. on his life. I mean, uh, he was born somewhere about 1920, 21, wasn't he? Uh, let's see. He was uh, my dad. Uh, 1920. He 1920. was born. It was because he was five years younger than my yeah. father. So he was in school with my oldest brother. A uh, year ahead of him, but uh, they. But, but everyone knew everybody else sure. in Wadsworth when we were growing up, as you well know. And uh, these people were part of our family, and when one of them died, I mean, the entire city just mourned. Uh, and we unfortunately lost a lot of them. Yes, we, we did. We lost a mm -hmm. lot of them in that World War II. And we lost in other wars as well, but that was the heavy, that was the, the, um, the, the heavy one. Tell us more about the Bernards, and then let's go to the Leafs, and then let's go to uh, uh, you're going to school and getting married, and whom you married, and the interrelationships there. As a matter of fact, um, I was going to say that um, um, some uh, every now and then we get to say, well, one of your relatives was on the one on this program. In your case, about 15 of the relatives were on your program because you're related to everybody in Wadsworth. And my wife also. And your wife, that's yes. what I mean, right? Mm -hmm. So tell us more about the Bernards, and let's uh, then go from there to the Leafs. That pretty much uh, covers the the offspring of my. Well, what about your dad, and, though? Um, my father. Um, was born, as I mentioned, in uh, 1915. Where were graduated. they living when they were born, when he was born? Oh, that's, um, yes, that's, I, that's I was thinking it. about that earlier. He, very... was, he was born in the house that is no longer uh, present, right. but the Wadsworth City Hall sits on that's that, right. on the uh, that's right. on the lot where, where my father was born, that little uh, square uh, salt box behind uh, Dr. Johnson's that's office right. on exactly. Maple Street. And what, what, what was the name of that house? What did we call that house all the years? I don't remember. I'm well, not sure as I ever the, um, heard it called it. As I remember from way, way back when, the, we called it the Bernard House. Oh, really? Yes, and mm -hmm. I don't know whether that was just something because we knew that that's where they mm -hmm. lived, or whether, and I'm sure I'll get a phone call tonight about whether, uh, how, that, how, how that came about. They moved from there to where then? Um, they moved, they lived on um, Broad Street, and from Broad Street they moved to Highland Avenue. Uh, and, and the home was about, oh, two or three doors from Broad Street on the east side right. of, um, of Highland Avenue. And they moved to Highland Avenue in the uh, 30s, I believe. That's probably yeah. pretty close, yeah. yes. 
When you were born, your parents were living where? My parents were living at 150 College Street, which is the, uh, the house is no longer is existing. Dr. Manning's office is there now, as a matter of fact, he's an optometrist also. It's strange that uh, an optometrist would uh, build a building right where a former optometrist was. Describe the house that they tore down, that doctor, where Dr. Man that's on the corner of... Um, North Party. North, North Party, I couldn't think of the word. North, North Party, Party and College. And college. Mm -hmm. On the, uh, that would be on the northwest corner. Northwest, right. that's correct. Uh, describe the house was there before. Um, that was a really pretty interesting house. Um, my grandfather purchased that house, and it had been um, a funeral home. Funeral home, that's Good right. Good Bixler, that's right. I believe it was. Um, and he remodeled the house, uh, and his office was in the house, and my grandparents lived in the house, um, and my parents lived in the apartment above that house, and that's where they were living when I was when born, born in 1938. Describe a certain portion, the north end of the house. What did it look like? Um, the north end. The uh, north there, end is going away. Yeah, the, the garage was, and the, there was a, a large expanse of driveway there and, and a garage. Um, there were a lot of basketball games played in that you driveway. Mm -hmm. My uh, uncle Dick Bernard, as I understand, was a pretty fair basketball player. Very good. And uh, even a, as a high schooler, we mm -hmm. went there at lunchtime and played basketball. Um, when we moved there, um, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself, perhaps. Um, my father went to optometry school after World War II. He had been an optician prior to that. Uh, and so 45, uh, 46, 47, and 1948, my father was in Chicago in optometry school. Uh, and then came back and joined my grandfather, Bernard, in practice uh, at uh, the College Street location. We moved into that house in uh, 1950. Two, March of 52, uh, my father remodeled it extensively. Uh, he was very handy. Um, his hobby was building things and remodeling things. The last home he lived in, he built himself. Uh, so we were always remodeling. Um, and you learned that trade yourself, didn't you? My father, um, I wasn't, I'm not nearly as good as he was uh, with my hands. My brother Tom is extremely good. Mm -hmm. Um, but I can repair a few things around the house. Talk about Brother Tom. You have two brothers. I have two brothers, Let's yes. Let's hear about two brothers, Tom and Jack. Um, Jack is next to me. Jack was born in uh, July of 1940, so he's two years younger than me. Tom was born two years after that, 1942. Um, do you remember Dr. Pease's name? Horatio T. Pease. Horatio Thomas. That is my brother Tom's name. Oh, really? Um, my mother lost a bet to Dr. Pease. Oh, really? After having two boys. <laughs> she's going to have a girl. She was going to have a girl. And Dr. Pease says, no, you're going to have, have a boy. boy. And so she, they named him? Uh, she lost the bet. Dr. Pease said, if you name him after me, I won't charge you anything. She kept her end of the bet. So Tom is uh, H.D. Horatio, Horatio Thomas, Thomas Pease. Bernard. Yeah. But we go by Thomas. He goes right? by Tom. So we have Amos Gary, That's Horatio correct. Thomas. And what about R Jack? Richard John. Is Richard Jack's John name. Is Jack. We, um, I'm not sure where Jack came from. My parents just started calling him Jack. But he Jack, is named after our two grandfathers. Two grandparents, mm -hmm. uh, the, the Richard parts. Now the uh, Richard Leaf and uh, Richard um, and your uncle. John, John Leaf. Um, I'm sorry, John Leaf. John is my Leaf. grandfather. John Leaf. And Richard my, is your uncle. Richard is my uncle. Richard, yes. Richard Leaf is your uncle. Uh, what are uh, Tom and Jack doing? Um, Jack. Uh, has his own accounting business in Jacksonville, Florida. Mm -hmm. He practiced here in Wadsworth for a few years, had the opportunity to buy a, a business in, in Florida where his, his wife is from. And um, so they moved down there approximately 10 years ago. And what else does Jack do? Or what did he do here in Wadsworth even? Um, Jack's first love has always been the theater. Theater. And who's else, who else in your family has as a first love the theater? <laughs> Well, I've always been very interested in the theater. We're going to hear about that I, a little later on. I love performing. Yes, I still do. do. And I've always said if someone offered me a part in Broadway, I'd be gone yesterday. No. Um, I've always enjoyed performing. Um, and, but Jack is much better. Jack is more of the serious actor. I was always kind of the ham and comedian mm -hmm. of the family. Uh, Jack still 
performs a lot in Jacksonville. He's in two theaters. Um, one of the theaters he even gets paid for. Wow, that's so, extraordinary for, for theater. Yes. No uh, one gets not paid. much, but uh, no. he, he's uh, a very good actor. And what about uh, Tom? Tom is a, uh, an optometrist. And where does he um, He practice? practices in Daytona Beach, Florida. He does not compete with brother Dr. Gary? No. Um, we've always kind of uh, thought we might like to get together to practice, but it, it never quite worked out. Uh, he stayed in Florida, um, and I came back here to Wadsworth. And your parents moved to Florida then, didn't they? My parents moved to Florida in 1960. And unfortunately, about a year or so ago, a couple of years ago, almost two years ago now, you were down there at Christmas time, and what happened? Um, my father passed away when I was visiting in Florida. He was not sick at the time. He hadn't been real well. He had a problem with his heart. He had congestive heart failure. And uh, Gladys and I were down there visiting the week before Christmas. We were planning to come back Christmas Eve and spend with our children. And uh, it was about 4 o'clock in the morning. Uh, there's a knock on my door. My dad says, Gary, something's wrong. And there was something wrong. He uh, had um, another attack of... Uh, his congestive heart failure, and uh, his heart muscle had weakened sufficiently enough that he didn't make it through. So um, I felt fortunate to be there at his passing. And uh, my brothers were there, and it was a very what close day was for his uh, it December. Was, it, was, uh, it was on a Thursday. December what? 21st. 21st, mm -hmm. just before Christmas. Yes. Um, and... Um, you and I were commiserating over this. I came to you because you are my optometrist and uh, came to you and we were talking about this and um, uh, about two weeks later, my own brother just dropped over dead the same way. But with not a heart, with not congestive heart failure, but boom, it's gone. So we do remember those dates. Unfortunately, we have to remember them, but uh, we had good memories about both of them and uh, we'll continue to have good memories about both of them. Gary, you went through school, probably went to um, um, Lincoln? I did go to Lincoln um, in fifth and sixth grade. Where did you uh, go grades one, two, and three, and four? Um, kindergarten, I went to Franklin because my family lived on 2nd Street on the corner of Wood and 2nd Street, and it would be the northwest corner. Northwest corner of Wood and 2nd. Okay. That's correct. Um, went to kindergarten, and uh, we were still living in that house when I went to um, Central School for first and second grade. Um, and I had uh, Miss Wells was my kindergarten Everybody teacher. Had Ms. Wells. Yes, um, Mrs. G was my first grade teacher. G E E, right? That's correct. Mm -hmm. um, and Mrs. Um, Mrs. G lived right beside my grandmother and my grandfather on on North uh, Party. North Part East Street. Right. Mrs. G, a, 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 a tall, stately woman. Uh, I don't know whether she had chemically assisted hair, but she never never looked old. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I liked her a lot. And then I had, in second grade, her husband was Herb G. Herb G. And, and what did know, Herb do? I don't remember. Well, I think it was in, had something to do with uh, sales. Uh, but some people try to say his, the name was G, but... No, uh, it was G. G. It was pronounced G. G-E-E, -E, right. Mm -hmm. I, I still have a picture of my first grade class sitting on the steps of Mrs. G's home on... Is uh, that right? On, on North Party On North Street. Party. Yeah. And then whom did you have in grade two? Um, I had Miss Nolf. Ludo Nolf. In, in second grade. That's why you're an optometrist today, because she made <laughs> you see the light. <laughs> yes, as I recall, she was... Um, Tough. She was a very stern teacher. Um, I didn't quite complete second grade here um, because my father was going to optometry school in Chicago, so we went to Chicago with my dad. And um, I finished second and uh, third and fourth grade in Chicago. Mm -hmm. I remember going to Chicago, being able to read, and I think I was one of the few kids in the room that could read. You and went to the Wadsworth School, school that you can read. That's yes, right. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then um, we, my dad graduated from optometry school in 1948. We came back to Wadsworth and moved to Euclid Avenue, 232 Euclid, and we lived there for a few years before moving to the home on on College Street. On College Street. Then, mm -hmm. in the um, in the interim. Um, that is between the time that you lived at on Euclid and and um, and College and, Street and College Street, um, you were living in what is now the Valley View District. 
Yes, but okay. I did go to Lincoln School. Lincoln school. In Why did you go to Lincoln School? Because that was the only school. That's right. uh, Valley, Valley View had not there. been built yet. Was not there yet. Mm -hmm. uh, Valley View was our, our oh, I think our newest school, and it's about 45 years old. Mm -hmm. So you were 50 years ago when you were, you were in uh, at Lincoln School. Grades five, four, and five, or five and six. Five and six. Five, I was. Who in was the teacher school. in fifth? Uh, fifth grade was Mary Sample. Mary Sample. She was around in just recent years, and then grade six. Yeah, Mary Sample. Um, is still alive, yes. living in Worcester. My wife went down to see her last uh, Christmas. How old time. is Mary now? I would. She's got to be in her early to mid nineties. Okay. What the, what was significant about her husband's occupation? Oh, he was uh, he was the uh, dog catcher. Dog catcher. The right. County dog catcher. The Carl. Carl. Carl Sample. Sample. Gladys lived uh, right across the street from Samples on West. Gladys, Street. your wife. Gladys. Yeah. Yeah. Gladys, my wife. And we're going to be talking about Gladys, your wife, in a couple okay. of minutes. And they lived across the street there. On, what what, uh, what street was that at that time? One, uh, she lived at 167 West Street. West Street. And the Samples were exactly right across, across the street. The street mm -hmm. Right. And then grade six? Grade six, um, the lady's name was uh, Miss Green. Miss Green. Yes, and I... Um, Wasn't here she, for long, though. No, she was not. Um, and boy, was she pretty. She pretty. Yes, huh? I remember that. Uh, <laughs> And she was a very, very nice teacher. She probably right? wasn't here for long because she became Mrs. Somebody else. Yeah, I think so. I think pretty. that's that's true. And and uh, Mr. Joachim was the uh, principal. principal there. We're going to have um, Mr. Joachim's um, brother come in to talk about mm -hmm. the Joachim family. Mm -hmm. There's a huge, huge. Oh yes, um, yeah, I know. Array of Most Joachims of them, around, yeah. and they're just great people. Then you went to the junior high school, and do you remember some of your outstanding teachers in the junior high school? Um, I certainly do. Uh, junior high and high school, well, 7th through 12th grade I was there. Um, I probably remember more of the high school teachers than, than, than the junior high teachers. Um, certainly uh, uh, Mr. McCafferty. Right. Um, biology. Biology, of which I still have a deep love. Um, uh, Mr. McCafferty taught me um, a lot about the birds, and I still have a keen interest in, in birding. Right. And he was an amateur ornithologist. Um, Probably the three teachers that, that I think back on that had a great influence on me, one was Oliver Cooper. English? English, and I was certainly not the best English teacher, but Mr. Cooper was something special. Um, I played golf with uh, Mr. Cooper later on after he had retired in a league, and I could never call him Ollie. To oh, me, no. he was always Mr. Mr. Cooper. Cooper right. I had a great respect for Mr. Cooper. Um, Doug Hudson was a chemistry teacher mm -hmm. that um, when I went to a college, um, I had essentially the same chemistry course that he had taught me in high school, so it was pretty easy. And uh, Mr. Kreider uh, was my physics, physics teacher. teacher. Yes, um, marvelous man. Uh, you had a good science background. Very much so, and I, I think that's probably why I'm doing what I'm doing now. We have and worse. still have very fine teachers in Wadsworth, oh, and that's... My, um, a great cre credit to uh, Chuck Chapman. I'm sorry, Chuck uh, Parsons. Well, Chuck Chapman too, but Chuck Cha Chuck Parsons, Mr. Parsons, because um, he knows how to select them. That's great. Now, after high school, you and that happened uh, in what 1954. I graduated 56. 56. Mm -hmm. 1956. Uh, we were not in any particular war at the time, so you didn't have to go to the service. That's correct. So instead, you went to optometry school, is that right? Or you I, went went to, to, I went to Hiram. Hiram? I spent four years at Hiram from 56 to 60. And that was uh, in preparation for going to optometry school? Where? Yes. I had entered Hiram with every intention of going to optometry school in two years, because mm -hmm. at that time, you could get into optometry school in two years. So I selected the courses that I needed to get in, but... Um, I got involved in sports. Uh, I played um, football and baseball at Hiram. Um, I was involved in the theater at Hiram. Um, I spent a couple years on a showboat uh, on the Ohio River. We're going to hear about that too. Um, and that was that had to be one of the highlights of my life. Uh, that was a, a terrific life experience. Not only getting doing what you like to do as far as performing, getting paid for it. Um, Thirty-five dollars a week in you room bet, and board. Man, that was a lot of money. It was, uh, uh, and and getting learning how to get along with people, performing your offstage duties. Uh, it was it was a very good experience. Mm -hmm. And after I graduated from Hiram in 1960, 
Um, I did get a letter from Uncle Sam saying greetings. Uh, uh, and I, instead of going into the Army for uh, six months or a year, I enlisted in the Air Force because I had always had an interest in flying as well. But um, they didn't want me to fly. They wanted me in a science background. So I uh, spent four years at the School of Aerospace Medicine at uh, Brooks Air Force Base. Doing what? Um, Evaluating pilots probably was the uh, the main thrust of the, the department I worked in. I worked in the Department of Internal Medicine, evaluating um, heart uh, and and lung of, of pilots, uh, people that may have had some disease or suspected of being something wrong with them. That was part of what we did. Uh, another thing that we did was I was on the uh, selection team for the Apollo astronauts. The nine Apollo astronauts were selected from uh, approximately 275 pilots from all branches as well as civilian test pilots. Um, and I got to meet all those uh, Apollo wow, candidates. Wow, something. Yeah, that was... Uh, Did any of the ones whom you personally um, reviewed actually become an Apollo? All of them. All of them. All of them, yes. Um, the the um, selectees went from one um, part to another, we uh, took care of their heart and lungs. Uh, uh, so I, I used to play handball with Frank Borman. I'm sure really? he doesn't remember me, but uh, yes, uh, down at the gym. Um, instead of going to lunch, a lot of times uh, we would go play handball or basketball or mm -hmm. tennis or something. Mm -hmm. Try that's to. you know that's an interesting story in itself, and you probably could tell us a thousand stories just like that, and we'd like to hear them. We're going to have to continue because we do have we're, we're going to run out of time because you you have too many interesting things to tell us. Uh, you got out of the service, and, you, and then what did you do? Uh, I went into optometry school right after uh, At Ohio military. State. No, I went to um, Illinois College of Optometry okay. in Chicago. That's Chicago. the school from which my father graduated. Okay. Um, and I spent three years there. I completed optometry school in three years, and then um, came back to Wadsworth in late 1968. And where was your first office in Wadsworth? And with where it is right now. Never moved from there. Never right? moved. No, Never I've moved been there, there. Um, going on 29 years. You went corner. there all by yourself, and you stayed there all by yourself, and now you're anything but by yourself because you always have a continual line of people coming in, having their eyes checked, and I'm one of them. Now then, Dr. Bernard, let me ask you a couple of questions which are extremely personal. How did you fall in love with the Gladys Geisinger? I mean, uh, Griesmer. Um, Gladys and I probably fell in love in kindergarten. Kindergarten. Uh, we were in the same kindergarten class. Um, and uh, some of the, uh, we may have been in first and second grade uh, together. And then we really started getting to know each other in junior high school. Um, she would pass me notes and uh, uh, we had a kind of on and off relationship like a lot of kids do in grade school and high school and, and we were high school sweethearts. We, we truly were. All the way through school. All the way through school. Um, we graduated in the same class in 56. She went to Bowling Green, I went to Hiram. Her and area in Bowling Green was what? She was a physical, physical education, education teacher. Yes. Continued to do that in her lifestyle. Yes, she was uh, a physical education teacher. Um, when she graduated, she was down in the Mansfield, Crestview area and taught down there and then joined a, the y, YMYWCA and worked down there until we were married in 65. 1965. That's correct. Okay. Now, uh, let's talk about the, the Griesmers a little bit. Mm -hmm. Who are the Griesmers? What are their family relationships here? And how many are there? And where uh, are they now? The, the Griesmers, um, let's see, there was um, the twin boys, George, George and Joe. Joe, Joe and Gla jo Joe Griesmer, George Griesmer. Twin boys that would be about uh, close to 80 years old now, would think. Uh, um, let's see, they were born in 1907. Well, it'd be more than that. It'd be yeah, um, about 90 Uncle, years old. Uncle Joe is still alive yeah. and not very good health at the Masonic home in Springfield, Ohio. Springfield. That'd be 90 years old. Yes, yeah. he will be 90 years old this uh, December. Um, my wife, uh, my wife's father was George. George uh, Griesmer, uh, and he died a few years ago. Um, there were also other children. Sam Griesmer. Sam Griesmer was a pilot. Yes, for um, Eastern Airlines, right. and, and, and Sam is alive and well. He was just visiting us a few months ago. He lives in the Boston area. Now, Sam then must be about 80 years old now. Sam's 85. 85, by the, the mm -hmm. years slip away. I remember Sam Griesmer very well. 
Now, Sam, just for the matter of interest, we where we are sitting right this very second mm -hmm. is the plot of ground on which Sam Griesmer gave airplane rides. That's correct. He landed right here with this the where the Falk Falk farm? farm. Yes, and the Falk Farm had a space in it that, that was uh, open. It was a field, and this is it. And this mm -hmm. school was built on that field, and this is where he gave airplane rides. And we had several people who had been on the program who indeed had airplane rides from Sam Griesmer. Yes, uh, Sam was probably one of the most single-minded people I've ever known in my life because flying was his love. Yes. Now, for uh, the sake of history, let's spell Griesmer, G-R-E-I-S-M-E. G-R-I-E-S-M-E-R, -E 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 okay. That's correct. A real German name, G-R-I-E-S-M-E-R, -E -E Sam Gr His real name was? Samuel. Samuel. Sam, um, so Samuel I. Samuel I. Griesmer. Mm -hmm. We have to get that straight, too. Now, as you remember Sam Griesmer and your father-in-law and your, and your um, uh, uncle-in-law, mm -hmm. uh, what do you remember was a common thread among all of the Griesmers? Um, of course, I knew uh, George and, and Joe the best, and they were funny. Funny. They, they had a hilarious uh, sense of humor. Yes, um, and uh, always had a good time. Um, they were always kind of kidding back with each other. Uh, George was more than a father-in-law to me. Mm -hmm. um, he, was, he was almost like a second dad, because yeah. I've known him so long. Our families knew each other. So he, he was really a very special person to me. Extremely yeah. real great people, the Griesmers. Oh Everyone knew the Griesmers in town. And there's two, there's two more we should mention also. Okay. The, the sisters. Oh, um, yes. Aunt Ruth. Ruth, Ruth Fenton. Ruth, Ruth Griesmer Fenton was married to Keg. Now, Ruth and Fenton's husband, they lived in Clark's Corners, didn't they? They also lived on Highland Avenue. I remember their home in Highland because Gladys's sister lives there right now. Now, they may have, I'm not sure. Oh, they also lived on um, Fairview. This is Kenny Fenton's. Ken Fenton. Ken uh, Fenton's. And I think that Kenny, at one time, they maybe had a, did he sell, he, uh, Kenny Fenton was involved with. Um, it was in uh, the grocery, grocery store business. business all mm -hmm. the time. The Redbird Food Liner. That's right, yeah. And that was Aunt Ruth. That was Aunt Ruth's okay. husband, yes. Now, maybe I'm wrong about the north end of town, but I'll find out because as soon as <laughs> this is aired, someone will call me and say, Kenny never did live there, or he did live there, which Yeah, I, I, I'm not sure about that. And also Aunt Jane, Jane Griesmer. Jane Griesmer. Um, and she, she may, married, um, Wein, um, boy, I can't think of his first name, Weininger. I had never met him. He was a pilot also, uh, like Uncle Sam, and... Uh, he was uh, killed in Alaska in an airplane crash. Uh, many, 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 years many, ago. Years ago, many years ago. Many years ago, yes. Um, back, at, I believe it was uh, in the late 60s, uh, because I, we were married at the time of, of his death, and, and she has uh, since married. Now, Ruth married. and Jane are not living in Wadsworth now, are they? No, they live in Florida. Right, they live in Florida. Mm -hmm. And um, you say that the only one living of the people, or the, the men, uh, Sam is alive. Sam is alive. Uncle Joe is Uncle alive. Uncle Joe is alive. Two sisters are alive. And the two so uh, George is the only one who's deceased in, the, in that family. Now then, uh, Gladys has another sister. Who is that? Um, yes, Gladys' sister is Clara Jo Crumley. Clara Jo Crumley, who's mm -hmm. on this program because she was one of those famous secretaries of the Wazoo schools. And everyone loves Clara Jo Crumley, just a great, great person. As a matter of fact, Clara Joe's daughter used to work for me. Yes, uh, Debbie did. Debbie, mm -hmm. tremendous. And Debbie's an airline uh, stewardess. She works for American Airlines. American Airline. She's a ticket agent, ticket agent. In, in the Phoenix area. In mm -hmm. Phoenix. I saw her in Chicago one time. I was standing in line. She saw me. She jumped over the counter and came <laughs> and gave me a big hug. She would do that. She's a great person. Yes. Just a great, great person. That takes somewhat care of the Griesmers, but there's still a lot, a lot of stories. But what about uh, Clara, about... Um, um, uh, Gladys's mother. Gladys's mother was uh, from the Sterling area. Sure. Her last name was uh, Hostetler. She was from that strong yes. uh, line of Hostetlers way yes. out there. In her Sterling. father was a butcher mm -hmm. um, in in the Sterling and her Preston mother, area. She worked in the schools, didn't she? Yes, she. Um, 
Uh, her first name was Dorothy. Dorothy. And she worked, uh, I remember her in, working in the cafeteria at uh, Central School. When and we did were she there. ever give you a little extra when you went by, uh, since you were going to be a married uh, daughter? I was such a picky eater, I, um, I'd never eat in the cafeteria. <laughs> <laughs> now, I was fortunate to live very close to school, living right there in, on College Street. Well, so walked home. We walked home just for walked lunch. Home, played yeah, basketball for, and did some of those other kinds yeah. of things. Now, we're going to have to get to the um, other parts of your life here. This is so very interesting. Uh, let's take, Gary, the, um, the ham. <laughs> hmm. um, I think the first uh, real production that uh, I remember being in was an operetta in Lincoln School called Mulligan's Magic. Mulligan's Magic. And who, I, who directed that operetta? Do you remember? Um, I think Mr. Joachim had something to do with it. And, uh, well, his wife was quite a singer. Oh, I, yes. Helen. Uh, yes. Um, they were very strong members of, of our church for years and years. Um, and what church is that? The First Christian First Church. First Christian yes. Church, right. Mm -hmm. um, and I played um, a detective. Tiptoe Pete was Tip the name of the... Tiptoe Pete. And my father got me a large magnifying glass mm -hmm. with a handle on it, and I, I can still sing the song, Don't Ask Me to Do It, from that <laughs> operetta. And then I'd look at the audience with his magnifying glass, and my eye got real big, and I got laughs oh, I galore from that part. And I think I, it stung me right there. That was it. Um, that was it. Um, the elixir of, of, uh, of response. That's wonderful. Yes. And then what did you do with it? The uh, high was, school plays? Yes, and uh, I've done a lot of uh, MC work through the years. and. Uh, I was in the two um, junior and senior class plays, and I've always enjoyed playing part character parts, mm -hmm. not necessarily leads, um, things where I could use an accent or um, something wrong with uh, body parts, um, mm -hmm. uh, where you could kind of be someone else. I was always constrained to portraying the uh, very serious, so sober, somber, um, over raw, overbearing kind of person in plays. Um, I was uh, Sheridan Whiteside and the man who came to dinner. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that they have ever had a play yet that lasted so long. It lasted four hours and five oh, minutes. Oh, good heavens, yeah, that's... Never, never ended. And I had lived throughout the whole thing. Uh, after um, high school, I did, um, I was in several plays at Hiram. But the real highlight of, of the theater, as far as I'm concerned, was the, was the showboat, the Hiram College showboat Majestic. And that, tell us what a showboat is. We don't have those anymore, or at least not, we don't see them very often anymore. No, this boat is, is still um, active, although it's on a permanent barge right down by uh, uh, the stadium in, in Cincinnati. It is per permanently moored there. Um, this, uh, the showboat went, started at Point Pleasant, West Virginia, went up, uh, the, the, went down the Canal River as far as Montgomery, past Charleston, and one summer we went to Cincinnati, the next summer we went up to, to Pittsburgh. Um, this is a, a floating theater. There were 425 seats on the theater, um, and it was pushed along by a stern wheel, a paddle wheeler called the Attaboy. And we did a lot of one night stands. And what we, kinds of programs did you pre present there? Um, an old-fashioned melodrama was mm -hmm. the first one. Mm -hmm. um, and we did things like The Poor of New York, Ten Nights in a Bar Room, um, Uncle Tom's Cabin. Um, there's a resident here in, in Wadsworth, Dick Miller, who was the student director on there. Dick uh, Miller was at the hardware store. Yes, he was a, he was a retired teacher, teacher from Coventry. From Coventry. Very talented. Oh, man. extremely uh -huh. talented. Yeah, we should be using more of his talents here in Wadsworth. You know, that's the, one of the problems we do have in Wadsworth right now is that people such as you and Molly Summer and Ida Jean Leatherman and um, your brother um, and um, some of the other ones who directed plays and who were interested in the theater. Um, we don't have that impetus anymore, and we need to get it returned because no we have the Dick Millers in this world mm -hmm. who are extremely re good. Uh, I heard him MC a show one time, and I still remember the lines. He's that good. Um, I remember your uh, performances. Um, um, I was uh, privileged one time to be in two of the uh, Footlighter shows. Um, thoroughly enjoyed it. As a matter of fact, I was in one of the shows with your son, mm -hmm. and he was an absolute delight. He probably, is he still doing that now? No, but he should be. He's very, very good. <laughs> yeah. He's very good. He didn't, he told me, he said, well, you know, one, I said, he was in high school. I said, um, 
boy, doesn't this cut into your studying time? So what do you think of the play? <laughs> <laughs> uh, to finish about the showboat uh, and the melodramas we had, and then we uh, did an old-fashioned candy sale uh, where it was kind of a shill act, but um, we really didn't take anybody for much more than a quarter. Uh, and then we had eight sparkling and scintillating acts of vaudeville. And what were they? Oh, just about everything. Music, uh, comedy. Um, I did a routine called Two Flips and a Flop, wh wh which we tried to reproduce um, for the O.J. Work uh, Renovation Committee with uh, Jim McElvain and uh, Roger Gregney. Right, I remember that um, one. Was that with, with the Russian accent? Yes. 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 Uh, this is, what was your name? Um, I, I don't think, we did it pretty much mine. Um, I, I don't well, the introduction, that. however, the introduction by Jim oh, McElvain was outstanding. No, Dick Miller did the introduction. Oh, did, did Miller? Yes. I thought and, was that. and uh, well, Jim was involved in that too. Um, and because his last line was, uh, he gave these Russian names. Uh, oh yeah, uh, that's right. He did. Petrovsky yeah. and so forth and so on. Then he came out with, uh, and I am Chim. Yeah, <laughs> that's that. right. Yeah. He's good. Oh, he's great. Yeah, we had a fun time doing that because you couldn't rehearse it. You just went and kind of walked through it. Um, we had musical acts, um, oh, dance, there, there were several things. That, and this was back in the summers of uh, 57 and 58. When you were a young uh, kid, I 21 was a, years old. I was a young man, yes. That's it was, right. It was, it was a very good time. Now then, what about um, the, um, the daytime job? <laughs> <laughs> My daytime job, um, I, I started uh, practice in very late 1968, uh, really in earnest in January of, uh, of 69, and have been in general practice um, since that time, and uh, it's been a marvelous experience. Uh, it, it, going to work to me is not going to work. I'm having more fun now than I did uh, when I first started, when I had all the res financial responsibilities that I had to be concerned about starting a practice, raising a family. Um, paying the mortgage off. Paying the <laughs> two mortgages. Uh, Getting a car. And, sure. And and all in other words, uh, irrespective of whether you are in the medical profession or not, those are still realities. They certainly they are. They still face you every single solitary mm -hmm. day. And after a while, that becomes a little bit less important because uh, you have a, a more of an impetus that, that takes care of them. But in the meantime, uh, you never did feel, at least those people who were your patients never did feel, that I know of, that you did anything but have fun. Even though you're, now you're blind, but I'm having fun <laughs> telling you this. <laughs> well, I've, I've been fortunate, and uh, I, I had a good, good background because of my grandfather and my father. My father was a tremendous influence on me, uh, not just in the field of optometry, but in the field of life. Uh, what a guy. Oh, um, yeah. Uh, and, and I miss him to this day. Oh, you always will. Yeah. Oh, they're hard sure. to lose. Boy, they're hard yeah. to lose. You surely know that. Tell us what you did when you first began and who worked with you, who were your secretaries, who were your uh, receptionists, and what were glasses like, and things like this. Um, Let's see, the, my, Gladys probably was my first employee because I couldn't afford to hire anybody. But then the when time. you got to the point where um, you wanted to be able to boss somebody else, you had Gladys stay home and you yes, got other Yes, yes, and of course we <laughs> started having children too uh, right. at home. So um, I have um, one lady in my office uh, right now who's been with me over 20 years, Sandy Sprankle. Um, she started as a high school student in one of the work-study programs and has been, uh, proved to be an invaluable employee. Uh, Bonnie King is, is still with me now. Um, and uh, fine lady, I mean, everyone loves her. Oh, uh, there's no question about that. She's uh, a great person. We, uh, um, there are times when people come in there just to talk with them. Yes, they're, uh, they're and, so nice. and your staff is so important. Oh, and, you bet. Uh, you know, they're the first people that uh, the patients see, and it's very important that they get a good they impression. They do a beautiful job, and they make everyone um, feel comfortable. Donna Simcox worked for me for a few years. Right. She now works right next door at, uh, for Tom Mullaney at the funeral We're going to take a couple seconds out here to talk about one of your close friends who is an optometrist but unfortunately cannot practice now because of his disability, and that's our good friend Cal Clifford, yes. Dr. Cal Clifford. Tell us about Dr. Clifford. Um, I've known Cal all my life. Uh, once again, his family and my family were uh, 
members of the same church. Right, um, she had the Clifford's and the Sterrett's. Her mother's yes. grandmother was a Sterrett. His mother was a Sterrett. Um, and I've known Cal since I was a, 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 young, a youngster. Um, I have, uh, I'm sorry to say I haven't seen him for a while. Uh, last time I saw him, we were, he was, we were both going into the barbershop. Um, and, and, and his uh, wife was bringing him in. Dr. Ka Dr. Clifford has a very keen mind yet. Oh. Uh, extremely kind. Yeah, he's a pretty bright guy. And he was also heavily involved with the theater. Yes, he was uh, an excellent sound and lighting man. Mm -hmm. very, very, very good. Um, it's a tribute, you know, to a, to a, um, a fellow colleague, or for, for a colleague, a fellow makes it redundant, to a colleague and to a friend. And um, the fact that the two of you were such good friends and uh, very uh, affable uh, competitors uh, as well. Very much so, yeah. I'm sure that... It's more uh, like being a colleague than right, a competitor. That's right, exactly. And yeah. we have such admiration for uh, Dr. Cal. Of course, I've known him since he was born, or almost since he was born, and uh, it's very difficult to, um, to think of him as being so incapacitated, but uh, we're, we're pleased that his mind is clear and keen, and I'm sure that he is working on computers. Going back to your own, then, you started there on the corner of Boyer and... Um, North Lyman. North Lyman, right next to the funeral home. That's correct. And you have two parking spaces there and it says, don't park here in the daytime. Now, uh, tell us a little bit about uh, the relationship between you and the funeral home. Um, I go back to uh, Kenny Cox right. and Big John Rieger. When I first started in practice, um, I wasn't as busy as I would have liked to have been. And uh, once in a while, with my background from the military and the uh, in the medical field, they would have an emergency, and John Rigger, who worked for Kenny Cox, would come over and say, hey, can you go on a run with us? I said, well, look around, well, there's no one here. I said, yeah. And he used to give me a couple bucks to go on a run. Now, when we're talking about a run, we're talking about an ambulance run. Ambulance run, run. Now, yes. we're not talking about now to go pick up a body or something like that. No. Because that's what we used to do. The Hilliard's funeral home uh, would go pick up uh, people put them in the ambulance, take them to the hospital. That's correct. And you would help them. Yes. And I knew that was uh, the case. Now, um, tell us about Big John Rieger. Uh, Big John, I th he was probably more known for his umpiring and refereeing mm -hmm. skills. He was very active. Uh, Why do we call him Big, Big John? Because he was yeah. a big, big man. man. Big man. Yes. What were, what were, what were his dimensions? Um, he probably was about six foot one or two, but he weighed well over 300 pounds. Just that thick. Oh, yeah, he was a big guy. Um, John was um, going to get married, and uh, this was in July of 1969. And if you remember what happened, then we walked on the moon. He had a bachelor party the night that uh, we walked on... Um, July 4th. July. 3rd or 4th? I think it was like the 19th or 20th. Oh, I thought it was. Um, uh, and I remember that distinctly. Um, and he, my son, John, was a little boy. And he used to get the biggest kick. He'd go down to the funeral home, and, and John would take care of him, and they'd have a Coke down there. And uh, um, I recall one time, um, I got home from, from work, and we were living on West Street at the time, and John had a, tool, uh, a toy box in the back room. I come home, the toolbox is open, all the toys are scattered on the ground. John is, is in the toolbox with a blanket pulled up, and he says, Hey, Dad, I'm playing funeral home. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and, and even to this day, Tom Mullaney and I have a very good uh, neighborhood uh, relationship. Uh, they've been very nice uh, to me, and... and being next door to them. Doctor, tell us about the difference in glasses now as compared to 30 years ago when you first started. Um, what, well, are some of the, what are the, some of the innovations and some of the techniques? Uh, for instance, uh, might even tell us some of the techniques in terms of examining. Uh, I'll give you a couple clues. Um, the examination uh, where we used to punch people's eyes out with uh, those little <laughs> Uh, oh, ice the, picks yes, for the, uh, glaucoma. To measure the glaucoma, yes. Now you, you thought that they were nothing more than dull little little plastic things, but we thought they were ice picks when you stuck them into Yes, us. and we used to use them on uh, eyes with no anesthesia, so that was uh, where we kind of have you lay back and put the, it's called a Shiatz tonometer on the eye, to, and you'd see this little arm, and it wasn't all that accurate. That's what I used when I first started in practice, and then we... Uh, 
got an electronic tonometer where it was necessary to touch the front of the eye with a, a probe, again, not using any anesthesia, and uh, people were squirming and have to hold their head up against the wall, and uh, it was uh, not the best of all worlds. Um, and now we have a different uh, instrument that uh, just blows a puff of air onto the eye using infrared light. To Which is bad enough, but it's a whole lot better than yes. that ice pick. And, and now being able to use uh, some topical anesthesia, there's even a different method to use with a, um, an instrument to measure the interocular pressure. What so about the glasses themselves? Uh, what, what, what has changed in that? The biggest change probably has been in thickness and weight. We can now uh, reduce the weight of the, the lenses uh, considerably from the old glass lenses. Primarily we used glass years ago, some plastic. Now it's even rare that I use glass anymore. Now do I have glass? Do I have glass or I, I believe have you have plastic I have lenses. plastic. Mm -hmm. well, you because of the weight you factor. Get, you got them for me. <laughs> and what about the frames? Um, I've had these frames now for quite some time and they um, take on abuse. I can tell you that because I'm always working uh, manually, physically, and things of this nature, and um, uh, <clears throat> I don't know how many branches of trees have slapped me in the glasses as I go by with my tractor mowing lawns and things of this nature, but uh, they seem to be resilient. How do they make something so small, so narrow, or so, uh, so fine, and so strong? If you think back, uh, a lot of the frames we had were xyle, or plastic frames, and didn't have much else. But now a lot of these frames are made from stainless steel. We have now some now that you can literally tie in a knot made out of titanium. So weight and durability have changed considerably in the, in the optics industry. And what about the style? Uh, you're wearing a round glass and my wife wears a round glass and my kids wear round glasses. Uh, I can't stand them because when I was growing up, that was the old-fashioned glass. Now, what do we do with, about style in glasses? Well, style is like anything else. You know, our, our, our clothing changes, our shoes changes, uh, eyewear changes. It's going to change again. You can count on it. What uh, will it go to the next time? Oh, think? I wish I knew. Um, I'd have a... You'd have a, uh, an edge on the market. Yes, I definitely would. Um, I'm, the wire frames have, have stayed around longer than I, I thought they were. And part of it is comfort. People want to be comfortable. And they are comfortable. I understand Very that. Very much so. We're going to come back to that in a minute. But right now, tell us about your political prowess here in the city of Wadsworth, what you did, and some of the problems that occurred. As a matter of fact, you and I sat next door to each yes, other we did. in the next seat. And uh, we'll share a story here in a minute. But tell us about how you got involved and why. Uh, I ran for city council. Uh, this was back in the early 80s. Um, at the time, I lived on West Street, and the, the uh, committee came to me and asked me if I was interested in, in um, running for city council, and I thought about it for a while, and um, I'd been in practice long enough. I was kind of established, and uh, I felt like I might be able to contribute something. Um, so I, I said, yes, I would, I would run, and um, I was uh, elected in that ward, uh, served for two years. Do you remember who, against whom you ran? Um, Bob Greenwald. Bob Greenwald. Yes. Uh, I believe he lived down in the um, um, Hillsdale Circle area. Uh, down Bob there. then finally did become a councilman, did he not? Um, I think he might have been even before. Maybe um, before? Okay. Before, before you we came ran on. against each other, yes. What were some of the things that were going on in town when you became a councilman? The biggest thing I remember is the Great Oaks Project. Oh, boy, uh, wasn't that something? Yes, and uh, if we would have had the foresight to take um, Bob Foster's advice, it might even be a little bit better. Uh, what was there. Bob Foster's advice, and who was Bob Foster? Bob, um, I believe he worked, did he work for B&W? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, he was an engineer. His wife uh, was Ann Foster, a teacher in Norton. A very bright guy. Oh, um, very bright. And his uh, proposal was to um, not have any uh, stores on the frontage up there on North High Street, but to have uh, like a marginal road uh, to keep the uh, traffic flow down. Um, I don't remember all the particulars, but that was kind of nixed, uh, unfortunately. Well, a couple of us were supporting that. You and I and he were supporting that, but we had some people who didn't think that was a very good idea because it uh, cut down on the the accessibility to uh, places like, um, um, well, not, not going to mention any names, but yeah. accessibility. But Bob Foster, just as a 
point of interest for historical evidence, um, went to Ireland on a vacation yes. and died. That's Just that's dropped right. over died dead. In, in Ireland. Tell us some of the other kinds of things that you remember. Who was the president of council at the time that you were on? Uh, Probably Chuck Johnson, wasn't it? Or Tom Cox. Tom was Cox. Around. Tom Cox. I think he was. Uh, one thing I remember very vividly about uh, city councils: we did not sit Republican and Democrat. No, we sat, we sat smokers and non-smokers. Non that's, that's why right. you and I were from beside each other. <laughs> we were non-smokers of the first one. Uh, Jerry Pate and uh, Bob Foster right. and um, Tony Perry. Um, Tony Perry was might have been um, after you. Uh, no, he was. Uh, he might have been president. No, he wasn't. Uh -uh. Uh, um, well, uh, who was the cigar smoking uh, councilman that we had at the time? Mm. Uh, Jones. Oh yes, uh, yes, uh, Mike Jones. Mike Jones. Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. Mike uh, Jones. And, and Ed Bates was and Ed with Bates us. Ed Bates was on our side uh -huh. because he didn't smoke. Three on one side and four on the other. <laughs> yeah, that was and that was how we segregated that's right, each other. We didn't like the smoke part. Now, of course, no one smokes no, in council. Good idea. Uh, one of the things that um, uh, I remember so significantly was the fact that um, uh, we had um, more of an intellectual relationship on the council than we had a political adversarial relationship. I don't remember. I mean, all of us, mm -hmm. every single one. We didn't care whether we were Republicans yeah. or Democrats. We just wanted to very we wanted to do we what had was Bob best. Moss, too, was, um, was one of those what, very bright man, oh, very yes. bright, very good person. One of the things we need to get back to, otherwise we're going to lose this one because our time is going to run out very quickly, is your children. You have two of them. I have two children, and yes. And you talked about one, and we didn't get very far with, with him, and then we have another one, too. And what was her name, and where is she? Well, we'll go back to uh, when I was in optometry school. Uh, I started in, in September of 65. Uh, John was born in September of 66. He missed our first wedding anniversary by about um, 30 minutes. He was 30 born minutes. in Chicago. Um, I came back to Wadsworth in 1968. Um, our daughter Lori was born in September of 1969. Uh, John had just moved to Wadsworth yesterday. As oh, a matter of fact, he? yes, I'm going to be doing some work at his house later this afternoon. That's what fathers do. Yes, that's right. Um, they, they purchased a house on Stratford Avenue. Um, my daughter Lori uh, lives in um, Cuyahoga Falls, and she works for a um, electrical. Uh, commercial electric co company in uh, Talmage. In Talmage. And what does uh, John do? Um, John works at Bradley's um, right now. He's, uh, you might say he's still kind of searching. He uh, graduated from Ohio University with a degree in uh, telecommunications, but he has not yet uh, put that to use. Well, he, we're will. Still, he will. Yeah, we're he will. He will. I have a lot of confidence in him. Just admired the young lad immensely when I was with him on that in those two mm -hmm. plays. Uh, we we'll quickly go to Gladys and find out what Gladys is doing and uh, where, where her mind is in terms of um, what you're doing. Um, Gladys is still um, with the Wadsworth School System. She doing is what? working as an uh, educational aide in the pre-kindergarten at Isham School. Uh, she did graduate from Bowling Green in 1960, um, taught uh, in the Mansfield area. She has a tremendous athletic prowess. Tell us about her athletic prowess. She, I would venture to say that Gladys is probably one of the best female athletes to ever graduate from Wadsworth. Absolutely. She, she's in our Sports Hall of Fame. No question about she's it. She's a um, good swimmer. Um, she still holds the Wadsworth High School record for most points in a basketball game. We can't substantiate this, but against uh, Barberton, she scored 48 points. 48 points? In 1956. Wow. Mm -hmm. I remember her. Of course, she's a little bit younger. She's, what, 57, 58? No, she's, uh, she and I are the same age. Um, 59? 59. I mm -hmm. didn't think she was that old, but uh, she looks much younger. Probably because she, she has more hair. hair. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember Gladys as a young girl in school, and... Um, of course, she was very pretty all the time, and so was her sister, and they're just great, great kids. But the thing that I remember most about her was the fact that there was not a soul in that school that she was afraid of. She could take on anybody <laughs> in terms of the strength and her agility, and uh, no one messed with her. She was a great person. Gary, Dr. Bernard, it's hard to call you Dr. Bernard, but that's what you are and what we, that's what we want to call you because I've known you since you were a little kid. But I do want to say that your family, the Bernards, and your inherited family, the Griesmers, have been have um, 
uh, joined together to bring Wadsworth some legacies that no one else was ever going to be able to, to give us. Uh, through the professional part, through the teaching part, through the goodness part, through the, through the historical part, everything. And we are so grateful to you for that, and we want to thank you for being on the program today. Well, thank you for giving me the opportunity to be here. It's our pleasure. Always our fun. pleasure.